The town of Berlin. Country charm at the center of Connecticut. Okay, welcome everybody to uh, our town council meeting. Uh, call this meeting to order and if we could stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, roll call. Councillor Azul Here. 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 Thank you. Um, I, I don't believe Miss, Mr. Kasner is not here, so we'll hold that off for another meeting. Uh, and we'll start with our audience of citizens. Uh, so if anyone wishes to. Oh, yes. Thank you. No, you don't have to. You don't, you don't have to. Just. I'll just call uh, one name, and then then you can raise your hand after after the. So Marcella Winook, please. And if we can, with our audience of citizens, we just try and keep our remarks concise and uh, as uh, reasonable as possible. Uh, Marcella Winook, Berlin, uh, High Road. Good evening. Hi. Hi. Um, I just wanted to make a comment um, to the council, and this is about bicentennial. Um, not about the park in itself, but that I feel if other council members have um, information to pass on from other committees, that it's very clear that it's either the person's opinion or it's stated that it's a decision or whatever it is, but that the information is conveyed very clearly. Because I feel in the last couple of meetings, a couple of things were said, um, but it wasn't conveyed in a way that made me really understand if those things were just opinions or if they were decisions that's all okay yeah i yeah uh, like you talking about maybe the conservation commission and yes. we met there yeah yeah i, th I think w we're going to have some more discussion obviously with that so okay Good point though thank you thank you uh anyone else needs wish to speak greta Just name and address for the record, please. Yes, sir. Brent Stifle, 232 Percival Avenue. I uh, wanted to first thank you for the opportunity to have, let me speak again. I know it's an open forum, but I had asked to be on the agenda, actually, the day after the last council meeting, and I was purposely left off. So for the purposes of what I would like to speak about, I would like to have leeway uh, afforded to me um, to speak without being interrupted um, and I have some very important things that I want to discuss that need to be um, brought to the forefront. I want to thank Arush and I'm going to slaughter your last name but uh, I met with Arush this morning and he is an asset to Berlin and I think he's going to be very good for Berlin. He comes from a great background on um, intellectual, smart, really good guy. Um, I had the opportunity to meet with him this morning. Um, unfortunately, an employee by the name of Christy, the town manager's assistant, uh, was, um, and it's a complaint that I've made formally, and I'm sure that you know about it, uh, but she uh, actually antagonized him, intimidated and harassed me in this meeting where I couldn't even really have privacy even though I invited her in to be sitting in the meeting so that there would be a checks and balance even though I was not taping the conversation. Uh, not only did she um, uh, rudely and unprofessionally interrupt me numerous times because she had people coming in including Kate who actually came in and bombarded the door and just basically presented herself and uh, was shushed her away. But I find this behavior not only unprofessional, it's undignified, it's a slap in my face as a taxpayer, and nobody else would do that to anybody else except apparently they think that they could do this to me. Well, they cannot. So I have filed formal complaints against Christy, and I may do it against Kate. This cannot continue. I also have found out that the human resource manager has went out of the jurisdiction of her job and gone on to Berlin Buzz and had me unbuzzed. Not acceptable. <coughs> now, 
The reason why I'm here today is to talk about the animals, the cats that have been um, meandering around in the back of the drain doctor for five years, four of which I have fed and housed them and spent thousands of dollars of my money and have been at physical, physical risk and financial risk also because I had to have a rabies series twice, uh, denied access to save a heart traps, re refused by Jan Lund to have assistance. And the reason why we actually even have this problem is because of Jan Lund. And I don't want to hear anything about FOBAC because FOBAC is going to have major issues. I have requested 501c3 data. I have requested financials. I have requested everything. I've actually been harassed by one person from FOBAC. Um, and I am not going to stand for FOBAC uh, at all because they have come to Jan Lund's defense when she was fired by the town of Berlin, by the police department. And, and uh, uh, Chief Collette is here, so maybe he can weigh in on this. But this is a whole nother kettle of fish. Jan Lund was fired years ago because of, well, patting her overtime Yes, that's what I've heard. It's what I've been texted by certain townspeople. And I will go on and on about this, but I will tell you this, that her, um, as a animal control officer, and I'm not talking about FOBAC, and I do not want to hear FOBAC people get with the cheerleader stuff, because that is not going to be the, the, the format where you're going to come up, because I know you're here for that. The, the whole thing with, with uh, Jan Lun and the um, animals are that she is the treasurer of FOBAC. Uh, can, I, yes. can I just, so we're happy to hear about the, the animal issue, but what I just might suggest. Mm -hmm. you, you I asked for this in print. I asked, I, I put complaints in. I wanted to get the data. No, I haven't gotten the data. And, and that's fine. I mean, certainly if you have um, complaints I against have town them. employees yes. um, that you know, we, we would handle it uh, not in a public forum like this. It would be, you know, either written or a sworn statement or what, whatever. I have done that. I do. have asked at the town attorney. I have put in the complaint. I have the, asked for data. And that's the way to handle it. And okay, well, I'm not being answered, and it's being stonewalled. I don't know why. But well, I'll move on from, from I, that. Okay? I, would, I would appreciate that. I will move on from that. Okay? Not the right form. That's Okay. I will... Uh, move on to the fact of the cats where I have been documenting every day I've been going out to see if these cats are around two weeks ago this is going on a month and a half there are three cats that are missing the last time I saw them they looked very very bad one I caught myself on Sunday on the first attempt I caught the cat her name is Lovebug she is now at our animal shelter waiting for me to retrieve her tomorrow. Jan Lun has and was supposed to track these cats every day for the days that she works, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I've been documenting every single day that she works because I have the time because I'm disabled and I go. And she has not only not been trapping, she goes when the heck she wants. These cats have now dispersed and my fear is that they have died because I haven't seen them except this one that I captured. So Kate Murdoch, who's a wonderful, compassionate, amazing animal control officer, who deserves the job of animal control officer, um, is somebody that not only is compassionate, but she does her job. Jan Lund does not do her job because she's doing Fobac's job on her day job while she's being paid by okay, the Okay, let, let's not, let, okay. let's. I've got proof about that. That's, but that's for a different form. That is. You can certainly address that. That is. Not, not okay, so where we are with these cats now, yes. and here's what I want to ask you. Yes. I have, and I asked this before a month ago, that I can get on the property and try to trap the rest of the cats. As I recall, mm -hmm. the last council meeting when you were here, mm -hmm. I, I thought we had an agreement. It was made on the record here, if I recall. Uh, correctly that you did ask that and I think you said you had some people to um, trap trap them and we said if they gave the town a hold harmless and 
showed proof of liability insurance mm -hmm. that we would allow that. I, I'm not aware that that has occurred. It hasn't because they're not going to do that. They're volunteers. Okay, so so yeah. that 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 was our agreement. But I'm holding it, you harmless as I have with my rabies series I, I, and I, so I, on and so forth. I, I understand that, mm -hmm. but but. But I don't know when that happened with your rabies, but the town hasn't always owned that property, so that's a relatively new, you know. The town has owned that property for quite some time, from what I understand. Uh, I don't. I'm not the one I'm talking about. I'm not sure. I don't. I don't think it has. But but that's beside the point. The, the agreement was if, if you had people to do it, and they hold the town harmless, um, we would allow it. But without that, the town is liable for it, and hence it falls. So then you're liable for my medical expenses? And, no. Uh, okay, no, well, liable so I am, I am giving you a whole harmless letter, and I will trap it because I'm successful I, at it. I think, I think that we probably should, we could have another discussion, probably. This is not the place for it, but, but I, I think from what I've read and heard, I've read some of your correspondence, obviously, mm -hmm. kept up to date, mm -hmm. that the cats that we are talking about are no longer around. I don't believe Correct. so. I haven't seen okay. the three of them for two weeks now, but it's not to say that I'm not going to try. Well, well wait, wait, wait. So them. with that in mind, we, mm -hmm. we have utilized a, um enormous amount of town resources and time to try and trap these cats. I think we trapped three, two, three. I forget. Eight trapped two of two. the original colony, one that was a byproduct right. and happened to just be hanging. Yeah. Kate captured three. I captured one in Jan Lund, zero. Well, that, that's beside the point. So no, we, it's not. We She's have, lead CA, ACO, okay. right? And another issue. But so mm -hmm. we okay. captured, I believe, the original number I heard in the beginning was five or six cats. No, that's incorrect. It seems like the number keeps going up, but but that's fine. But Incorrect. So I have the tally. I know where the cats are at my friends, two of them, and the, the third one I just got. The point is now it's on town property. We, we've spent an enormous amount of time and we have trapped a number of cats. We don't see the others around from mm. what I hear. So I think, and we can discuss it, you know, uh, with the town manager on another day, but um, you do I think know. we've gone as far as we can go with the cat issue. I believe that really we need to move on from it. You yeah. do know that the reason why this is even happening is because of Jan Lund and her inefficiencies. Okay. Honestly, and, and bottom line is, I have taken my time, my money, my physicality, while I have cancer on top of it, to do her job. Greta. Unaccept okay. No, I'm sorry. It's unacceptable. And I'm Greta. sick and tired of, of, of the stuff that gets shoved under the table here, yeah. including why she got fired in the first place. It's not... For, uh, I think for the people of the town oh, should know. That's, Cost that's hundreds of thousands of dollars out of the town's different monies. And it's, She's still employed here. It's a different discussion. Dif different. When do I get to discuss that? Well, and if, call for her resignation because I want to know how I do that. Well, that that uh, as I mentioned before, if you have complaints, allegations, you certainly are are at liberty to to write them. I have to a us. litany of them, and other An people email, will come forward to. statement, mm -hmm. however you want to communicate to them, the town is fine with us, and mm -hmm. we will certainly look at them and address them. No, no mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's how we really need to handle that um, issue. Uh, but the cat issue, we've really, I think, come to the end of what I think is fair for everyone, including the cats and the town and our town employees and. Mm -hmm taxpayers we, we've spent a lot of money and a lot of time we've trapped some cats we don't see any more around we i don't see any more i'm the one going every day not, not that. so mm -hmm. by your own admission we don't see any more cats so I, I think we have to move on from that if uh, there are some housing structures there there are and i will so work with you guys to get them out if you would with a town employee, we can take them down and we sure. will turn them to you when I can work it in with my cancer schedule and uh, my yes. other things. Yes, well, I, I absolutely will do. I think what we'll do. do is maybe we'll have the town employees take them down. Okay. We can, we can put them somewhere and you can call the town well, manager's I'm... office and you can come pick them up. No, I want them actually delivered because they're, they're inconveniently where I cannot physically do it. So I want them actually to go right, to we'll, we'll a shelter. Work, we'll talk about we'll work that. We'll work on getting them back to you. I'd appreciate that. But, so other than that, I think the cat issue, we, it's run its course. I, I'm sorry, but we, we really put a lot of time and effort into it. You know we have because you've it agreed It didn't have to, to happen. It, did, it should not have happened this way. I'm but, so sorry. You know that, and it's granted, not my but, fault. It's 
one person's fault. And I am sick and tired of it. I'm sick and tired of wasted town taxpayer so, dollars on inefficiency, okay. inefficiencies like that woman. I'm sorry. So, and she's double dipping, and she's the treasurer of Fobac, and nobody watches the fox in the hen house. Right, I've okay. had it, really. So that's, we, we talked about how to handle that. Mm -hmm. And any other issues beside the ca cats, we were agreed to. We'll take down the shelters, return them to you. We've seen no other cats there, so I okay. think we. And what are we going to do about the town employees who are disrespectful and unprofessional that can get away with these kind of well, things? And what you... Christie did today, it was embarrassing. Now here, Arush right. is the first time here. I am meeting with this man professionally, having a nice dialogue, and he had a witness this. It was disgusting. If we've you've put in. A complaint. If you mention it to us, we will mm -hmm. look at that and see. In the corporate world, heads would roll, firings would happen. But apparently not here. You can get away with a lot here. No, I'm not sure. You know that, that. I don't believe that's the case, but. It is the case. Come on. Comments are, are, are heard, so. Mm -hmm. All right. The police can speed, too. I call the police on the police. They are speeding at excessive speeds. I follow them into the back of the precinct. I call them on the carpet. Are you going to a call? They get away with that stuff? 80 miles an hour up the road? I mean, come on. Greta, please. Thanks. I can go on and on, but you know what? Allegations. I am, uh, no, it's not allegations. Inviting. I have it on my phone. I, you know what? Here I, here, right. Here's what I'm about. I'm about transparency, yes. ethics, mm -hmm. disclosure, mm -hmm. and not omitting material facts. I'm all about transparency. It's why I have a 30-year record in FINRA, unblemished, highest level, and I am highly respected in government with my cancer bill that I brought forward. I'm going to save lives in doing what I did. Understand. I've done nothing but good things, and I'm all about doing positive things and having positive outcomes. I don't want negativity. I'm with so you understand that. We're all with you. I am here for positive outcomes to streamline things and to make things better. That's why we all sit up here, too, trying Wonderful. to make the town better. I appreciate it. Thank you, Greta. Appreciate it. Uh, okay, anyone else wishes to speak? Yes, ma'am. Name, name and address for the record, please. Hi, my name is Amy Foster, um, 72 Circlewood Drive in Berlin. And I just want to say something on a very positive note that um, what I think is happening to Jan is really sad and disgraceful, and I am going to strongly encourage her to um, sue for slander and libel. Yes, it's in writing as well. Um, and I will right, proudly right, right, and happily assist in fundraising efforts to do so, as I did when she got her job back. All right, ladies, please. That's all La I ladies, have ladies, to say. ladies, stop, 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 stop. Please address the council, and and comments should be appropriate. But let, let's, we don't want to. This is Absolutely. not for. I'm uh, just hearing support from Jan. Give and take. For yeah. Jan, I knew this Take's was that. happening tonight from a post on Facebook about her intentions of coming here, and I feel like this poor woman is being singled out and viciously attacked. She's her reputation is out there on stake, talking about padding her uh, her um, her overtime pay, paychecks with overtime. Um, and, and when I happen to know Greta, that she spends countless hours volunteering for animal rights, for animal rescue, she wouldn't waste her own time and money to do so. She wouldn't take like very local vacations she wouldn't she doesn't spend money on herself she spends money on her passion which is animal rescue and um i just want that to go on the record that she has my support and i'm sure many others out there as well for doing a great job for over 20 years in this community thank you all right thank you very much for your comments items uh yes sir How are you? <laughs> Scott Trevethan, 230 Circlewood Drive. Completely different topic. Okay. Okay. Um, positive note, uh, three of the family foundations in town, Tyler Kopp Foundation, which I represent, the uh, Labadia Foundation, and the Lee Foundation, have been working together to come up with a couple of different projects 
to give back to the town because the funding and financing has been so good over the last couple of years. Thanks to the help of a great number of town employees, we have come up with a wish list and one of the top items is going to be a scrolling sign potentially in front of Berlin High School and also on Farmington Avenue. And we want to have that in the volunteer park area. The idea behind it would be something that we could control at the town level, have all the different departments and all the different town organizations be able to send in their information so we could scroll it on a regular basis. Nice. Um, thanks to the help of Jack Healy, uh, before he had left, we had got this started on the ground, and I feel like we've got some momentum, and I hope by the next meeting to have a much greater ability to give you some details, but wanted to let you know that the family foundations are very committed to this project, and uh, we'll keep you informed. Great. We appreciate that because it's always so difficult to get that type of information out there, so to have a central repository that people drive by and see is great. So appreciate that. Look that's forward to the project. That's something we have to put on the agenda. Yeah, we, if you're, are you coming back next time? We can, we uh, can, my, uh, my hope is thanks to Jen and a few others and Kate, we should be, we're working to get all of the details yeah. to present to you. The, the challenges we have at the moment are the, we don't even know where all the obstacles are. We're trying to get no. that ironed out, but I think the, the toughest part is raising the money which we have. Okay. Where I ask your help as a council and as a group is helping us remove the roadblocks that are removable Sure. so that we can do this because I can't imagine too many people being upset about that. Would it help to no. put this on the agenda next meeting? Yeah, if you, if, if you have whatever details Park and Rec has, Jen, just, just while we're talking about it, we can make a... a yeah. Um, after our after our initial meeting, Steve Wood and I met with Maureen from the zoning department to find out exactly where the obstacles do lay and how to figure out how to make it work. We have a meeting this Friday to kind of figure out exactly where our zoning regulations are and what our obstacles are. So I think based on Kate and I and Steve Wood, let's have Friday's meeting. That's where Scott's coming and the other two family foundations and kind of take it from there and see where we're at there. Sure. And then, so, I mean, when you get a project to that the town, you know, the council and or planning and zoning has to approve, obviously we'll put it on Right. There the is agenda. a chance that it has to go, it might, it's probably going to have to go to planning and zoning probably first. Probably going to planning and zoning first, so zoning first I'm guessing. That yes. might happen before we go to the next yeah. council meeting. Right. There's yes. There's something as far as volunteer park, of course, is um, town owned. Right. So that's, and then also it would be accepting the donation. So that's why these things would be going on the agenda. Sure. All right, and then if we need an 824 or anything, right. those are the things. So that's why um, once we get those um, items together and figure everything out, we'll put the items to get you know on the agenda as proper. Because you have to accept all donations, right. and then right. also for an right. 824, you have to do a referral. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. So right. I have a question for you, Kate. I knew at Volunteer Park the Junior Women's Club had donated the sign that has, you know, a bed, so could it just be replaced? I, I'm going to um, say we're going to talk about, I've been in touch with Donna Beach, okay. and um, we're going to, she will be at the meeting on Friday too, and we're going to talk about um, everything at once. Um, it, it, if it works properly, um, then it would be a replacement of the sign. Perfect, because I was a junior woman and I was in the club when we did that sign. So yeah, very so, cool. Yeah, so it, 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 we were trying to cross the T's and dot the I's. So, so include them. And yeah, all right, so, and uh, Rose has come, I have apprised him of where things are, and he'll be at the meeting on Friday morning also. So Thank we're you. just trying to, not put the <laughs> in your room on her. I, I think so. But I don't want to put the cart before the horse. <laughs> yeah. Very exciting. Anything else you want to discuss that we have on the agenda tonight? <laughs> Mark, no. Mark, for, for I need to come yeah. back up again. Um, I think we'll leave that for. Okay. <laughs> I need to come up to do a clarification or something. Does Can we have... just do it? One minute. Private, no. Please. Uh, it needs to be on. Okay. One minute. Yep. So, you can time me.
32 Percival Avenue. This is de uh, directed at Amy, the phobic. No, yeah. you know, no, 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 no I need to find, no, not... she made a threat to me no. of a lawsuit. Please. So as an employee know. of the town of Berlin, this woman has come up to threaten me no. with a lawsuit Greta, of libel. And anything that I say or have said and put in print Greta. is Greta. what people have told me from inside this town, employees and otherwise. Greta, Greta. We don't want to, we're not going to go back. I've been threatened by this woman. I've been. Uh, it's to be. We, and there will be a lawsuit not, filed against Fobach and or that. Jan Lund and the town. So you want to play please. that game. It's fine by me. It's not the forum for that. Please. Well, it wasn't the forum for her to say it. Please. That's okay, right? No. It's not okay. Okay. Well, so, this is going to get to be quite bad for the town because I'm all about media and I will not let. Hey, Greta. I will not be bullied. Greta. Thank you. Uh, you for your comments. Jan Lund. Greta, please. That's come on. That's enough. Thank you for your comments. All right. Anyone else wishes to speak? Yeah, I'd like to speak. Yes, sir. Uh, up to the mic name and address, please. Ray Foster, seventy two Circlewood Drive in Berlin. How are you? I just wanted to make it known that I worked with Fobach for 17 years, and Jan Lund is one of the most dedicated, hardworking people we have in this town. People have no idea how many hours extra she puts in when she's not working, you know, taking care of all the animals on her side, taking care of other animals and other problems. That lady should be sued for slander. All right, well, uh, let's not, let's not. No, it's her personal no, agenda. No, 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 stop, please. We're not talking about no, Stop, Greta, Greta, Greta. No, come on, that's, that's enough. No more. Greta, This is Greta. character assassination. No, please, gentlemen, stop. Listen, you both will have to leave. I don't, I don't want that, so please. No, all right, stop, please, sir. Stop, both of you. Stop, that's enough. Ladies and gentlemen, please, that's enough. If any more comments, you're going to have to leave. We don't want to go there. We got our comments in. Please, Greta, thank you for all your comments, but that's more than enough on the topic. All right, anyone else on a different topic, please, that we want to discuss? Here, seeing nothing will end, we will close our audience of citizens and move on to our consent agenda. Uh, we have a number of topics there. We have uh, donations. Mostly animal control, Berlin boosters, Timberland. We've reviewed them all. If we don't have any questions, we'll go ahead and take a motion. Okay, I'll make a motion to accept the seven items in front of us tonight in the consent agenda. Second. Thank you. Any further uh, comments or questions? Just want to say there's some very generous donations here to some uh, mm -hmm. some items here that uh, should go, you know, recognized. I um, mean, you got a, a bunch of donations to the Berlin Library. Mm -hmm. uh, I, a large donation to the uh, cemetery, uh, mm -hmm. the South Middle Cemetery, and a large donation to the gazebo at Veterans Park. So it's great. Thanks to all those people that do that. Absolutely. Donations help us a great deal, so we always appreciate any of them to any town organization. Um, any further comments or questions? Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Thank you. Agenda item one. Um, is well, I, I, we, we have our new interim town manager here, so it's a little awkward. He's kind of here unofficially until the next minute or so, then he will be official. <laughs> so uh, we'll, it's a little awkward. Sorry, folks. We'll, we'll get through it because uh, he came one day early before our meeting, so we're just trying to get through the whole thing. We're almost, we're almost through it, though. Uh, so this is just an agenda item. We have to uh, transfer uh, some money uh, because we have an agreement with, with a new interim town manager requires funding in excess of what was included in the adopted budget. So at the start of the fiscal year, surplus funds are not available in other departments, so only the source, uh, the source of this necessity funding is our contingency fund. So we need a motion uh, to uh, transfer some money. Okay. So Move to approve the transfer of $79,250 from the contingency account to the department head wage and related benefits account in the town manager's department. Second. Thank you. Any uh, questions, comments? Have we none? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. All right, so moved. And now we have our appointment of our interim town manager um, and approval of the employment agreement, which we've all been provided in our packets. And in accordance with the Berlin Charter, the interim 
Town manager can serve for 180 days, so we need a motion on this. Okay, I make a motion to appoint Roche J. Wilbur Grima to serve as interim town manager. Approve the agreement between the town of Berlin and Roche J. Wilbur Grima as interim town manager and further move that Mark Mayor Krasinski be authorized to exec execute the agreement on behalf of the town of Berlin. Second. Thank you. Thank you for the second. Uh, any further comments or questions? We've, I, I, I uh, know we've all reviewed the contract. So all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Congrats. Well, congrats. Well, thank you. Glad to have you. And, I, and I'm glad to have someone that's last name is much worse than mine, I believe. <laughs> so that's a that's, uh, relief for a change. So mine will be easy maybe to some people. So listen, Arush, we're, we're happy to have you. We welcome you. And uh, first town council meeting already. That's great, huh? Wonderful. Yeah. Look forward to it. <laughs> So I'm going to hand you the reins. You're, All right. You're on now. Come on, great. We'll help you, though. We'll help you through it. Don't worry. You know, you got some, uh, some uh, catching up to do. Yeah. So first of all, thank you very much to the council and also to the uh, staff members at the uh, Berlin Town Hall. You've been very warm, welcoming, and uh, my first two days here has been very exciting. And I actually look forward to uh, working with everyone in the town and hopefully make things better. Right. So um, we'll get through all these challenges. Uh, and that's why we are here, so the people. So, um, so there are some uh, new business items. Uh, what I would do is um, my first meeting I will go through it as it is laid out, but maybe after my first meeting I'll have some recommendations on how perhaps we can improve certain things. I don't want to you know, rock the boat too much. I might be asked to leave today. <laughs> so, um, I didn't sign the contract yet, so uh, yeah, be careful now. We're good. All right. Oh, good. Thank you very Thank much. You. So uh, the first few ones, I'm, and I'm told that these things happen quite regularly and frequently, but uh, I'll introduce the subject, and there are subject matter expertise. I'm sorry? Oh, you have to do three, right? It's kind of still It's still a carryover, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if you want to... Yeah, we'll just we'll do three, we'll and then, do that then you can start on four. Okay. I, I realize, yeah, three yeah. is uh, still uh, out of your purview for a moment. Yep. That's okay. It's a moment. I'll step back. Uh, change the uh, summary of this agenda, agenda item is we're going to change your authorization from Jack Healy and or Mark, uh, another good name, Kazakowski to Roche, Jack, Jerry Rima. Uh, as I stumble through that, I apologize, Roche. Okay. Interim town manager, effective July 8th, 2019. <clears throat> so we'll need a, a motion on that. So moved. Okay, very yes. good. Uh, so, so while well, that motion just, just, we'll just you want, want to read it? Yeah, we should move to it. substitute Arosh J. Rima, interim town manager, as the authority to apply for grants, enter into grants agreements, and execute other specific contracts, including signing checks on behalf of the town of Berlin. Uh, said authority, having previously been authorized to former town manager Jack Healy and former interim town manager Marie Kazakowski, effective July 8, 2019. All right, thank you. Second. Thank you very much. Uh, any further comments or questions on that? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Now. Okay. Now you're on. Again, Number right? four. Take two. Thank you. Yes, thank all you. Right. So uh, the first uh, fourth item on the agenda has to do with the library's participation in the Connecticut Library Consortium and the library connection, and as a result, uh, taking all the discounts, and the move is to ask, uh, approve the purchase orders for the following vendors that are outlined in your handout. Great. Thank you. Um, so, if you have any other questions, if not, we'll take a we'll take a motion. Sure. On this. I, I move to approve purchase orders for for the following vendors due to the library's participation in the Connecticut Library Consortium and the Library Connection Inc. As the best discounts have been already been provided, this is the in the best interest of, of the town. We have supplies, books from Baker and Taylor Company for adult books of forty three thousand. Uh, books from Baker and Taylor Company for children's and teen books of 22,000. Uh, supplies, data services, and audio visual, visual from Library Connection Inc. for $52,000. And network maintenance and data services from Novus for $12,000. Second. Thank you. Any further questions on that one or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Number five. Thank you. The next item comes from the Berlin Parks and Recreation Commission. At its meeting on June 13th, the recommended name in the Berlin High School tennis courts, the Rex Smith tennis courts, after um, Mr. Smith was a dedicated teacher and a coach in the town for over 30 years. Yes. Um, 
unfortunately he uh, passed away suddenly right uh, in November and uh, so the tennis courts uh, they're great they we, we uh, right we uh, renovated them what I think what two a year ago right two years ago we finished something like that so it's it's a great honor so uh, we'll go ahead and take a motion on this sure move to approve the naming of the Berlin High School tennis courts to the Rex Smith tennis courts in honor of Rex Smith Second. thank you very much yes Yes, absolutely. Just before you guys vote, Eileen Thurston wanted to come and speak about Rex. Oh, sure, absolutely. This is Thurston. Great, welcome. Well, Eileen Thurston, 100 Sawmill Drive, Berlin. Um, as a co-teacher and his department head, as well as a coach in town, Mr. Smith, took um, up the job of teaching math and coaching tennis in Berlin on September 1st in 1980. He taught here for 38 years. He coached here for possibly even longer than that. As far as I can find records, it was 38 years. Um, I did want the town to know that this was not just pick a name for it. Um, Mr. Smith, I can honestly say, guided those tennis courts through being <laughs> renovated. I have many text videos and the pouring of the cement to the choices he sent me looking at many. We disagreed many times on what color things were. But um, I will say that it is a great honor for him. He took sick on Halloween and passed away five days later, um, very suddenly leaving all of us um, with a great hole. Um, he truly is not a man that ever would have asked for this. We're asking for this in his honor. Um, we would like the possibility to dedicate them during the Ivan Lendl camp that's going to be run at the high school. He was very instrumental in getting that here. Um, the day we're looking at, Ivan Lendl, who is a tennis great himself, will be here. We're looking for August 8th. Um, we have submitted, and hopefully at the Parks and Rec Commission meeting, we'll have the sign that we intend to donate um, approved so that on your next agenda, the sign would be there for the 23rd so that everything could go um, as planned. Um, I do have over a thousand signatures from people in the town that um, signed in support of this. So I did want to let you know that it wasn't just a little thing that came up. I've been working on this for well, I don't know, since easily February or March. So um, oh, I'm, I, no, I'm we're sure it's a lot of work. We we read some of the. So um, I I do want you to know that this would be a true honor to have these dedicated to him. It's. Thank you very much, and uh, I think all of us here, we, it's the right thing to do. I think we all recognize that, so we appreciate all the work. We, yes. So um, he was my both of my son's math teacher, and my younger son was on his tennis team for a couple of years, and uh, they were very sad to see that he passed. So I, I, when I saw this in the agenda, I was really um, very thrilled and very moved. So I really do thank you for your work towards this. It's its truly meaningful and I, I think it's a wonderful um, thing to put in memory of, of him because uh, he was a great guy, you know, professionally, personally, and, and you know, for the kids in our town. So thank you for the, your hard work. Yes. I've had the pleasure of knowing uh, Rex quite a while, uh, longer than he probably would want me to tell, but um, when I was appointed to the council, the first email I got from a citizen was Rex's, oh, really? and uh, it was it was very instructive, and uh, fix the damn courts. No. Yeah, <laughs> okay, there something you go. like that. And uh, they continued right right until we had the suspension pouring out there. So it's well deserved. That was a great guy, and thank you for uh, your efforts. That's great. Thank you all. And, uh, you know, we, we all were happy when that finally got done. We knew we did all that with the new high school. You know, I, I remember, you know, my first term, why it never got included in the high school project is whatever, water under the bridge, but it's good that we got to it and, and we got it completed. So 
So that's that's all great. So with that, we'll go ahead and uh, look forward to you guys at the next meeting. But we have a motion tonight to approve the naming. Did that already? We, we, did, we second. Okay, so that's oh, that's how we were. I forgot we had done that. So we, we got off track a little bit. So we have a motion on the floor. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Right. Thank you. All right. Great. All right. Do some good things. Okay, number six. Number six uh, comes from the Parks and Recreation Department in requesting a bid waiver for the annual maintenance contract as well as upgrading software for the Vermont system. Uh, the description of the system is the recreation management software utilized by the department that allows online registration and payment as well as scheduling, invoicing, record tracking, etc. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> now we're waiving our bidding, so... No, you have a great reason. So this is a company we already spend um, money with every year to do the annual maintenance on the recreation management software. It's what we use for our registration. It's what we use for our billing, for our field reservations, our community center reservations. So we're already in with this company every year. This year there's just more money in the budget because we have to do a manual, a mandatory upgrade. The software is being upgraded to this new version, and it's not going to be – the old software will not be supported. So if we have issues with the old software, we won't be able to call and get tech support anymore. So it's a mandatory software that all the towns that use this software are going through. So we're just asking to be able to move forward with that. Okay. Thank you. Um, any other questions? If not, we'll take a motion. Sure. Move to waive the bidding requirement and renew the annual maintenance contract and award the software upgrade contract to Vermont Systems for an amount not to exceed $13,341, as this is in the best interest of the town. Second. Thank you very much. Uh, any other questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Thank you. Good. Thanks, Jen. Let me introduce items. Uh, Chris, you can speak to probably seven and eight. Um, seven, they both relate to the 889 Farmington Avenue property and the work that's going on with Lori Aero Engineering. Uh, conduct, conduct additional rounds of groundwater sampling from three levels located in Farmington Avenue. There's another location yes. on the number eight, so I'll have you explain both seven and Thank eight. Thank you very much. Uh, Chris Edge, 240 Kensington Road, Berlin. Um, yes, item number seven is um, looking to um, add to some of the work we're currently doing. We had put a monitoring well in the right-of-way at the front of 861 and 873 Farmington Avenue to determine whether the groundwater was coming up from 889 to that point. We did get a hit on one of the wells. This essentially will, <clears throat> through our insurance company, uh, put in three additional wells between the right-of-way and the 889 property line, essentially to determine where it's coming from, to see is it coming from there, potentially coming from the, um, I guess that would be the west side at that point. This will help us in a couple different things. One will give us the four quarters. Four quarters is what DEP uses as their baseline. If they see four quarters of results, they use that as what they go forward with for planning. Um, so that's basically um, working in addition to what we've done. And basically, DOT has, I'll say requested, mandated is a better way to put it, <laughs> when we're done to take them out. So this is both putting the wells in, testing them, and then pulling them out when we are done at that point. And that's what these monies are from. And I believe these are covered by our insurance company under the off-site um, liability policy. Okay. Yes, our insurance carrier, yes. Yeah. That's number seven. Okay. Appreciate that, Chris. Um, <laughs> questions of Chris? If not, we'll go ahead and uh, take a motion. Is it one question? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. How would one remove a well? I do not know. I, I, I believe it's probably more filling in than getting rid of it, but I think it's more the um, the liability of having the actual hole itself. Uh, yes. Yeah, no, I, I think it, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't really remove a hole. You're right. I, I think it's more filling in. <laughs> Thank you. In Berlin, we do different things, Charlie. You should understand that by now, all right? We understand grouting the well. Yeah. Make, make, make a bigger hole. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, we're going to take a motion. Okay. Questions? Move to waive the town's bidding process and authorize the interim town manager or the new, uh, the new interim town manager to enter into a contract amendment with Loriero Engineering to conduct three additional rounds of groundwater sampling from the three wells located in Farmington Avenue and to remove the three wells at the end of the sampling period for a fee of 
$80. That is to be paid by our insurance carrier since this is in the best interest of the town. Second. Thank you. Any further uh, questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Number eight. Yes, I realized I had kind of mixed and matched. I did not mean to do that. Um, this one actually is the four additional ground watering wells that wells are going to be between the right of way and 889. Um, essentially, again, looking to see if anything is coming from the west. And essentially, in addition to what we're already doing, they're going to need the four rounds. Again, four rounds, one each quarter for the one year for DEP. That will essentially help us in two things. One, determining where, again, where it's coming from. But more importantly, two, if we do need to do a hydraulic control system, to basically clean the water coming out of V89, this will tell us exactly what we need to do and in which direction. We need to then do that work. Uh, there is a piece in here as well for $8,000, which is for, give me 30 seconds, I can just tell you exactly what it says, um, consulting services. And this includes a couple different things, uh, which is attendance or conference call participation for a biweekly Newport and 889 update meetings, which is with the big mixed-use development. Uh, preparation and review of cost estimates for mediation and capping of 889 and hydraulic control system. Town Council meetings as needed. Uh, meetings with DOT, DECD, and DEEP, as well as miscellaneous deliverables. When these agencies asked us for information and reporting, they put it together for us under this amendment. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any other questions of Chris? If not, we'll take a motion. Okay. I move to waive the town's bidding process and, uh, and to authorize the interim town manager to enter into a $35,565 contract amendment with Loriero Engineering for additional investigations and general consulting relating to the off-site groundwater plume from 889 Farmington Ave, subject to approval by the town's insurer for the project, and authorize the interim town manager to enter into an $8,000 contract amendment with Loriero Engineering for consulting services related to the on-site considerations at 889 Farmington Ave and for coordination with the TOD project to be paid to be paid the demolition and environmental remediation account. Second. Thank you. Uh, any further comments? Hearing none. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you all. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Uh, number nine. Number nine, Mr. Mayor, this is a update you had requested about simple recycling collection yes there's a memo attached an update. yes yes no action required but just an update how are we doing we're off to a rocky start <laughs> i see um, that you didn't you didn't receive this mailer yet did you uh, i think okay. most of us I did you yeah. Yeah. Okay. about i think 33 people on my yeah. street did some didn't i don't know yeah. i didn't just get one. just to refresh everyone's memory this is for the shoes the clothing blankets soft textile type recycling which is free and will get paid twenty dollars a ton for whatever they collect That's so great. everyone should have received this unfortunately the mailing list was a taxpayer mailing list it was it, so the owners of record got these Further, they not took true, out East true. Berlin and Kensington addresses because they didn't realize they were the town of Berlin. So that left about 5,000 people who didn't get, or properties that didn't get these. And I read that today, yeah. that, but, but that wouldn't cover why I didn't get one, because I live in Berlin, mm -hmm. and, and I'm a taxpayer, and that's my house. So I think, um, it's weird. On our street, like, uh, just a few two or three people got them. I don't think the rest did, I, so I don't know. What I also heard something about the post office had a piles of them in there. Oh, great. Okay. So I, well, I don't know. Let's, so let's blame the post office. There's, there's going to be a second one. shot at this mailing list. We're going to actually get the actual, we're just going to do it to every resident, whether they're renter or owners in those properties. We think it'll take about four to six weeks to get everything online. Oh, However, great. if anyone wants bags, we at Public Works have a couple of cases of the bags. Oh. They can also go and, or they can call us and they can email the company directly or call them and request them and they'll mail them to them. Okay. So if someone's in a real hurry to get rid of their shoes and clothes and blankets, we can, we can help out. It's sat for this long. What's the difference in yeah. another four weeks? Yeah, we, we actually, right. yeah, Jim Horrible and I called uh, the, rep, the rep today and she said, yeah, the, the pickups were suspiciously low. You know? <laughs> okay. like, well, they missed 5,000, you know, actually property. So, wow. um, yes. Well, that's just one point I wanted to bring up, too, is I saw a lot of, um, I didn't see a lot, but I saw several people that had bags out on the side of the road, and they, it feels like they've been there for weeks and months. Um, uh, I know it happened to you. <laughs> I, I know one person on my street had a bag on the corner there, and it, it's been out there for so long that yeah. the grass is now dead. Yeah, they, uh, they should so. be. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> they should be timing them with their, their you know, bi-weekly recycling. Yeah, right? it was yeah, like a deal we had a couple them. times. Yeah. So, well, if anyone sees those bags, let us know. We can actually call the company. They want them. They yeah, want the they bags. want them. Yeah. 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 So if anyone, they can call Public Works and then let us know what streets are on, and then we could just, uh, yeah. it's a nice nice white van with blue lettering that will come around so people are concerned about what who's picking it up. It actually has a logo on the side of the van. So, so I saw one on Hudson Street. It was there for like you know, four days or so. Um, it's not there any longer. Oh, okay. But, um, you know, I was wondering, you know, when is it going to get picked up? Yeah. yeah. So, um, I have not seen any bags on my street yet, but okay. I know there will be. And like I said, I did get the. Yeah. I think there's one on mine. They did pick it up. So they're supposed to pick it up the day of the recycling, right? Yes. You put it on the recycling day, right? Of the blue bins? Exactly. The blue, uh, okay. So I know that there's something in the citizen about it. Do you think they could possibly do an update that... You know, some citizens didn't get we could probably do some Facebook outreach, okay. you know, do a post on Facebook. I'll talk to Jen. She runs the, the Facebook posts. And maybe on, uh, <coughs> maybe on the website, website. Yeah. Um, and maybe, a news, maybe an article to one of the uh, reporters. Okay. They had one, right? An announcement that's in the citizen, pretty much I've seen it yeah. now. So maybe just... You know, I'll take a look and we'll adapt it. Put some okay. the email address and the phone numbers. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank yeah. you. And that's great that they're going to pay us, right, yeah. if they collect... Uh, they need to collect so much? Or whatever. Uh, no. no. Whatever they get, they pay us. Exactly. Which will offset our new yeah, recycling, recycling charges, yeah, I hit. guess, right? Which yeah. is uh, a good, good thing. Increasing. Yeah. Increasing every year, I guess. Right. All right. Well, we appreciate that, looking into that. Thank you very much. Got a lot of questions walking the dog on that. So now I can walk the dog in peace. Say that Hopefully in a place. month and a half, things will get worked out. I think residents then will get the timing down, too. So, Great. Any other questions? Thank you. I think we're good. Thanks a lot for that update. Appreciate it. Look off. Um, Number 10. Number 10 pertains to the golf course, Timberlin driving range policy. Uh, this has to do with the driving range, trying to restrict how many yards that people could hit the ball. 200 or below. So right. yep. it's going to, okay. going to tell us, John's going to tell us how we're going to do it. Um, the commission had requested to have the uh, policy change that was originally enacted by the Park and Rec to to limit the driving range to irons only. Just give you a quick little history of this. Um, the reason why is because people were hitting balls into the neighbor's property. And we had gone to limited flight balls, which travel about 50% of the distance of a regular ball. And then we had gone to irons only. Um, now they, the, the commission would like to go to a policy that says no shots allowed over, hit over 200 yards. Um, and we have a 200-yard marker sign down there. And um, the problem is a lot of people can even hit irons, two iron, three iron, well over 200 yards. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to limit it the, the distance that they can hit it. So we'll keep the balls out of the uh, adjoining uh, blueberry uh, Correct. match. Right? Correct. They don't mix well with the blueberries. We don't want to do that. No, I know, I know that. I know, I know you guys have been trying to work on fixing that so appreciate that are you keeping the restricted flight balls yes oh yeah it doesn't say that that's why i thought maybe you were changing it so people can hit real balls but no okay that's a good idea okay that's great um so we'll take a motion okay move to approve the change in the driving range policy to read as follows the driving range is provided for the benefit of golfers because of its size and location there will be no shots allowed over 200 yards Appropriate signage will designate the range limit. Individuals exceeding the range limit will have the unused balls confiscated and will not be permitted to play golf on the day of the infraction, as well as losing playing privileges for the following seven days. Cash customers will receive a coupon, which can be redeemed for the unused round after completion of the seven-day suspension. Okay. Second on it? Second. Right. Second. Thank you. Uh, any further uh, comments or questions? Are we none? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Um, thanks for that, and, and thanks to the Golf Commission for working on that some more. I know we've been trying to work that out, so appreciate. Hopefully this, this works, right? We think it's going to work. Member of the Golf Commission City, that's what I'm asking. Yeah, good, good. Appreciate that, thanks. Okay, number 11. Number 11, uh, another one from the Timberlin Men's Golf Club is requesting a waiver of green fees for the New England Public Links Championship Tournament. Okay. 
Um, again, this is a waiver of uh, greens fees, and there are seven clubs in the NEPGA, um, and they're, they're scattered all over Connecticut and in Rhode Island. So um, they're looking to have the event on Sunday, um, July 14th, which is this coming Sunday, um, tee times from 7.45 to 8.45. Now, some of the clubs that are from considerable distance away, the men's club has provided um, hotel information for them to stay overnight in Berlin. Um, if, they have, if they're taking off at 7.45, they don't want to be traveling two hours to come and play. Um, a three-year average uh, greens fees on the second Sunday in July is approximately, <clears throat> excuse me, $2,800, and they're looking for a waiver of $2,934. The men's club um, cart carts are mandatory for for each of the players, so we will generate $1,348 of revenue from the carts. And again, this is only it's only taking up um, really approximately an hour of tee times on Sunday morning. Great. Okay. Any further questions of John? If not, we'll take a motion. Okay. Move to approve the waiver of greens fees for the New England Public Links Championship event that will take place at Timberland Golf Course on July 14th, 2019, in an amount not to exceed $2,934. Second. Thank you. Uh, further comments or questions? Uh, yes. Yes. Um, Sir. Uh, I would just like to thank you for attaching the, uh, the last page on here with the itemized town contributions I'm sorry I didn't mention that yeah, I know I like through that. my notes um, the men's club over since 2008 has has donated over twenty five thousand dollars to the town and to the golf course uh, fishing derbies junior golf um, it's all listed in in the uh, information oh, that, that you yeah. received yeah thank you yeah that's great John that's a big deal having that tournament here isn't it yes they they it, it used to be ten Ten clubs actually, and now it's down to seven. So it was on a ten-year rotation that Timberland would host it, but now it's on a seven-year rotation because only seven clubs. But it, it, absolutely yes. Great, that's good. All right, uh, number twelve. Number twelve is a request. Uh, yeah, again, pertaining to golf. We got a vote on that. Oh, I'm sorry, did we not vote on that? All right, I'm sorry. I'm uh, just so. off the yeah. off my game tonight. Too long of a break. What do we have? Three weeks off? That's not good. Uh, okay, so. Uh, we have a motion right on the floor. We yes. second it. Okay. Any further comments or questions? Are we not all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Thank you. Sorry. For 12. Okay. Next, next one is a request uh, from the director of golf to utilize the T sign account for beautification around T signs and clubhouse, for additional course advertising, as well as for the purchase of other signage. Okay. Um, originally, the, the T sign program was, was set up with, I don't know if Chris Edge is still here. No, he doesn't. Um, but it was in conjunction with Chris Edge and people at the golf course. What we did was we sold advertising small plaques on the bottom of these very nice T signs that we had um, put on the golf course. And all the advertising paid for all the T signs. The T signs were approximately $750 a piece. So we generated um, somewhere around, uh, I think it was around $12,000 total. And this is in this account that's listed in your agenda item. Um, we're just looking to have the ability to, to spend the excess funds on beautification of these signs, beautification around the clubhouse, and we're also having um, a gentleman who owns a company that does drone flyovers. He's going to come in, he's going to do a flyover of the golf course uh, each hole, and we're going to put that on our website also. Oh, nice. That's cool. And we would like okay. to have the ability to pay for that out of this account. Okay. Great. Thanks. Uh no further questions. We'll take a motion. Move to authorize the director of golf to utilize the T-Sign account for beautification around T-Signs and, and Clubhouse for additional course advertising as well as for the purchase of other signage. Second. Thank you very much. Any other questions or comments? If not, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, John. Uh, number 13. Great. So the next seven actually pertains to uh, facilities. And the first four of them, I'll take one at a time, uh, has to do with uh, requesting the town council to waive the town's bidding procedures. Uh, has to do with contracted services account, both for um, building, public buildings and schools. Second one is for school, and same with uh, op 
operating materials account as well, again, for public buildings and schools. So perhaps I would ask. Uh, yes. Yeah, come on up, come in and Poor Roche. We don't want him to get involved in all this now. He's going to be, what in the heck is going on here, right? Roche, it's all right. <laughs> I stuff in before I got in here. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> you got it. You're getting it. I'm getting it. <laughs> Um, yeah, the next four uh, relate to goods and services rendered um, for vendors and contractors that we utilize in all the town buildings. We have basically our two checkbooks, one for the town buildings, one for the school buildings. The majority of these vendors and contractors are on either state or national contracts, but there's a few mixed in there that we found over the, the few years have provided the best pricing continuously time and time and again. And what this is doing is allowing us, um, the, what we run into problems is the uh, cumulative POs, um, it doesn't take long to hit 10000 on on a bigger project or a major breakdown. So right. these vendors have consistently provided the best price. So we just want to have the ability to, if we need to increase it up to 25000 we pick 25000 as that's kind of the state guideline now right. uh, for purchasing. So we're trying to follow that. Um, a lot of the contracts fall in the 10 to 13 range. Um, some of them a little bit more, some a little bit less. But if we have a vendor come back multiple times um, at the same building or various buildings, it doesn't take long to get that PO up above 10000 So... A lot of this is proprietary equipment, um, factory authorized service, and the vendors that provide that service. So we're always looking for new vendors and um, trying to reach out to people constantly, new people to come on board. But for now, just the time of year and the workload that, that's ahead of us, we just want to be prepared financially if, if need be. Hopefully not. Great. It's difficult um, to know when things are going to break, how much is going to break, and where they're going to break and the cost of it. But what we're finding is with the infrastructure, some of them, <clears throat> as they age, um, Parts are becoming more obsolete, more expensive, and then the people that we can get those parts from is a little more and more limited. So we're kind of forced to narrow down where we can purchase from. So, so that takes care of the the next four relate to to those vendors for the two checkbooks. Okay. So we'll we'll, we'll go ahead and go through these four, and then I know you got something else, right? Yep. Uh, we'll we'll, we'll a few others. Yes. Let's vote on these four. Don't go anywhere. This probably won't take too long. And uh, one quick question before I forget. So thank you for, I know we, um, uh, Mayor Kozakowski authorized, we have, uh, uh, we installed the air conditioning unit, right, in the police uh, locker room. Yes, yeah. Finally got them some air conditioning. And, and is it working well? It's been holding 72, uh, no complaints from the officers uh, that I've heard. have an officer yet. back there. You, got, you guys much happier now? <laughs> Great. It's all time. <laughs> and and it really you know, it's a temporary fix, but but because we're going to redo the HVAC system and all that with the with the jail cell project, but I it, you know you, you guys have suffered way too long, so I'm glad we got to finally get that approved uh, before we get to the whole HVAC. Provided renovation. some relief for the summer months. Yeah, I, yeah, because I know we were trying to get the HVAC, but I know it was delayed. Right, it's into the fall. Right, it tied in with the jail project. Right. Yeah, the the timing of everything was difficult to have the major work done before the summer, so this this will get them through. Yeah, great. Well, thank you for doing that, and I uh, hope you guys are more comfortable. All right, so number 13, we'll go ahead and take a motion. Okay, I'm going to make a motion to approve uh, Department 38 purchase orders for contractors up to $25,000. Move to waive the town's bidding procedures and approve issuing purchase orders in an amount not to exceed $25,000. And Department 38 contractual services account for each of the following contractors. Uh, Clearwater Industries, Water One Tech, Landry Communications, Drain Doctor, Associated Security, Security 101, Johnson Controls, Train U.S. Uh, and Automated Building Systems, Calvert Safe and Lock, Stanley Access Technology, Dakin Applied, Hussey Advantage, Swan Associates, and Kone. This is in the best interest of the town. Okay. Thank you very much. Any further comments or questions? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Number uh, 14, I'll uh, we'll just go ahead and take the motion. Sure. This is a approval of Department 38 purchase order increases. Uh, I move to waive the town's bidding procedures and approve issuing purchase orders in am an amount not to exceed $25,000 in the Department 38 operating materials account for each of the following vendors, FW Web, Electrical Wholesalers, Filter Sales and Service, MC Management, Tall Brothers, John Boyle, Swan Associates, and Hajoka New Britain Plumbing. This is in the best interest of the town. Thank you. Uh, any further comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Number 15. Oxygen. 
Nothing has. You all right? Over there? I heard it. I heard it. Three weeks got to me, too. Yeah, it's too long. It's too, we're off our mark tonight. Yeah, that's all right. Uh, okay, you got a number. Next one, okay. I move to waive the town's bidding procedures and approve issuing purchase orders in an amount not to exceed $25,000 in Department 61 contractual services account for each of the following contractors. Clearwater Industries, Water One Tech, Landry Communications, Train Doctor, Associated Security, Security 101, Johnson Controls, Train U.S., Calvert Safe and Lock, Stanley As Access Technology, Dakin Applied, Hussey Advantage, Swan Associates, Kone, and Horton Electric, as this is in the best interest of the town. One sec. Yeah. The drain doctor was mentioned in the previous one. Does that raise the uh, amount to 50000 for the drain doctor? I, I think it's different. Two different. Uh, uh, two different departments. Departments are different. I was just checking that. Charlie and myself. One was for the for the town buildings, one was for the school. So, but he could have fifty thousand dollars worth of work from the town without a bidding process. Um, put the way this is written, potentially yes. Yep. And I believe I'm not sure. Um, there was a. I believe a short list that was pre-approved for on-call services. I believe he's still on that. I'm not sure if that contract is still active or not. I'll have to double check. But through Public Works and, and the Water Control, he's. There's a third account. Basically, yeah, working for various departments throughout so town. Make sure we understand that's the intent for because we're limited to ten thousand by ordinance or by charter. Uh, by charter. By charter. So the access so is we're here going a couple five times. times with the charter. Right. right. So one vendor. Just, I mean, it's a good point, and I, I, I know. I think with Drain Doctor, some I remember some of the contracts. He was the sole bitter but 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 I don't know if that's all so Mr. Counselor um, when we do these things what I mean if we're way over the charter amount I mean this is what, what do you what, what say you on this just so we know well, right so we're waving it no matter what no matter what the charter says we're waving it yeah. Okay. To do it. Yeah. Okay. That's a local company, right? Correct. Yes. Green doctor? Yeah. yeah. yeah Burl. He's yeah. the only vendor available. I guess. Yeah. 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 A lot of these are on both. So. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's not. It's not just him. Right. Right. Yeah. Um. So yeah. No. I mean, that's the that's the policy decision we make. You know, based upon our authority, and you know, you, you have obviously explained it to us, but it's good that we are aware of what. It, it may be over that amount in the uh, charter, but obviously that's our policy decision. Yeah, next time there's a charter yeah. commission, we might want to think about. We we did. I think we tried to it. up it that, in, right? It was in the lump sum. Uh, yeah, one we tried to up that. Item and it didn't pass. We never could get that, right? Yeah, it's very difficult to get it up with the voters, but um, that's all right. So uh, I think it's in the best interest of the town. All of this. So, all right, we're good. So. A motion on sure. Move to waive the town's bidding procedures and approve issuing purchase orders in, the, in an amount of not to exceed $25,000 in Department 61 operating materials account for each of the following vendors, FW Web, Electrical Wholesalers, Filter Sales and Service, MC Management, Toll Brothers, John Boyle, Swan Associates, and Hajoka, uh, formerly New Britain Plumbing, as this is in the best interest of the town. Thank you. Thank you. Any further comments on that one? Are we none? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. 17. Oh, different. Different one. We got through those four. Number yeah, 17. So, num number 17 uh, has to do a contract approval for the uh, HVAC system replacement at the senior center on that purpose room. Yes. Yeah, two years ago in capital, um, system number one was replaced, and then this year in capital, uh, funding was provided for system number two. So the multi purpose room will have uh, two new HVAC systems. That's great. Taking care of our seniors, that's always a good thing. Okay. Can I take a motion on that? Sure. Move to utilize State of Connecticut contract number 10 PSX 0152 AA for the purchase and installation of HVAC system number two for the Senior Center multi purpose room from Train US of Rocky Hill, Connecticut, in the amount of $36,986.98 which includes a 10% contingency of $3,363. Second. Thank you very much. Uh, any other comments or questions? Yes. Yes. 
sir. Just a, a financial question. So we budgeted for fifty thousand for this, and um, just short of thirty-seven thousand is what this costs. What can the remaining thirteen thousand be used for? It, it's in our capital account for the town building, so we can either go towards a, another senior center project or another town building project. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, what, remember the what was that? Was the last thing we voted on something for the senior center, right? Kitchen floors. Floor. The floor. Cabinets. The floor. But but that was coming out of last year's money, right? right. So, I I I don't know if the uh, I hope the uh, I think the board of finance met tonight. I hope they approved that. Um, but if not, there's a few more projects on the list um, at the yeah, center. I, that I bet you there's plenty. We can as as devote that towards good. it. Good. Okay, that's great. This is just a quick side question. Yep. Housing Authority owns that building, correct? Uh, yes. But the town does the capital improvement to the building that they don't yeah. own. Yeah. It's a great deal. It's our current agreement. It's our, yeah, it's our, it's the agreement with them. Yeah, that's kind of how that works. So, Thank you. Good, a good question <coughs> uh, for full transparency on how it all works. Um, okay, great. So we'll, uh, we took a motion, right? Mm -hmm. We were on the vote. Yes. So, any other comments or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Thank you. Number 18. Number 18 is also to waive the bidding process related to the authorized me, during town manager, um, to increase the purchase orders for sole source service provider automated building systems of Glastonbury, Connecticut, in the amount of 50000 collectively. Okay. Excellent. Uh, Okay. Um, yeah, that's um, they're the sole source Allerton uh, distributor in Connecticut. Um, so they they maintain all the school buildings. Um, our annual service contracts for the five schools is right around twenty thousand. Um, but there is some billable um, time and materials outside of the, the service agreement. So we just want to have the ability, if needed. Hopefully, we don't need it. But um, if we have major breakdowns or any major components that fail, we'll be able to get them back online as soon as possible. Um, we, we just figure we use 10,000 per school. Um, right. You know, there may be more at one school than another. Basically, the high school and the, and the middle school have the most components within them, and the, the most complex systems in the elementary schools don't have as much. So, right. um, just if we could refresh our memory, because uh, someone was asking me some questions about this, and I didn't remember at all. But the HVAC systems and the other, obviously, the high schools knew. But the other schools over the last three or four years, it's, we put a lot of work into them, right? Yeah, the um, the middle school during the renovated uh, the IAQ project about 10 years ago yeah. received all new mechanicals. Um, the elementary schools received all new rooftop mechanicals when the roofs were done over the last five years. Okay. So the last thing to do within the elementary schools is the classroom ventilators. Okay. Um, we we do have a, a project designed um, to retrofit that with a with a chilled water system, a four pipe system. Um, should funding be available in the years to come? Um, okay. We have a design for that. It was engineered out with an architect and a mechanical engineer that seems to best fit the buildings as a retrofit. The challenge now is that we have solar panels on all the elementary schools, so we're limited to, to what we can do on the roof. Um, oh. So. so the HVAC systems are all new, relatively new, yep. in all the other schools. Yeah, the, uh, uh, the high school, obviously. Yeah, the middle school, 10-year-old systems, the high school, five, yep. um, and all the rooftop equipment on the elementary schools is, is within five years. Okay. Um, but the, the classrooms are hitting the 30-year mark. With, with that particular project? So what, what, how, how would we get around the solar panels? Um, the to... It would be a, a chilled water system, a four-pipe system, so you'd have chilled water and hot water running through the building, and then the, the units would be replaced in the classrooms instead of a, an air-cooled system. It would be a, a chilled water system. How much does that cost? Now, that's for all the, the three elementary schools? Three elementary, yeah. Well, the, the, latest, the latest project budget was we were over the million mark. Um, hey. Right, that's a significant uh, mark. Yeah, that was um, you know, we we have, we were given some some bud project budgets based on the system we wanted to go with. So anywhere from three quarters of a million up to a million and a half. Um, but until we really put it out in the street, we're not going to know what. Don't know. What we're going to get so. Okay, well I appreciate that update just so I can answer some questions. Great. Um, <coughs> Okay, we need a motion on this one. Okay, move to authorize the interim town manager to waive the bidding process and increase the purchase orders for a sole source service provider 
uh, automated building systems of Glastonbury, Connecticut, and, uh, and the amount not to exceed $50,000 collectively. Second. Thank you very much. Any further comments or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. 19. 19 pertains to the town hall door replacement project, uh, requesting a bit waiver, in this case to cover invoices related to environmental testing and monitoring. Okay. Uh, uh, anything else on, on this, Doug? Yeah, the uh, environmental hygienist was brought on board in 2015 when we did the, the original design for this project. And then we finally able to do construction this, this year. Um, their design was under 10,000 at the time to do phase one for the plans and specs that went out to bid. But the monitoring during construction was, was going to be billable on time and material. Um, the samples that had to go to the lab for the PCBs and the asbestos, the disposal, writing the plans, or the, I'm sorry, the, the closeout reports, the air quality testing on site during construction. So unfortunately, the invoices exceeded 10,000 um, once they're all finalized and submitted. This was to change one door? Seven. Seven doors. Seven doors. It seems like a phenomenal amount of money. Yeah. They were here um, evenings, nights, mornings, you know, monitoring while construction was happening. Um, and they re were required to have the air monitored during the entire construction process? Yeah, part of the plan with, with the PCBs and the asbestos was to provide that monitoring. So. And did we have PCBs and asbestos? We did. Yep. We did. So they, the good news is that what was identified in the plan from an initial round of testing, um, nothing expanded further in and around the site. So we didn't have any, any additional exposure or risk other than what was previously identified. So everything's been abated in containment and hauled off site and disposed of properly per EPA and federal state guidelines. Charlie, we need to get in the air monitoring business. <laughs> okay, That's now true. we... Got to make sure the air is clean. We get it, and with asbestos and PCBs, we understand. So, okay, okay. So we'll take a motion on this. I move to authorize a bid waiver and process payment to en EnviroMed Services of Meriden, Connecticut, to cover invoices in, in the amount of seventeen thousand three hundred and twenty-five dollars related to environmental consulting and testing related to the town hall door replacement project. Second. Thank you very much. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Number 20. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next item is from the Director of Finance. It relates to uh, realigning the budget on some of the items that were spent on uh, various lines. Uh, total amounts to 39000 The largest amount is uh, in the police department budget. Uh, there's a spreadsheet attached in the yes. back. Uh, it's, from what I understand, it's moving back uh, from what was... Um, Police personnel to overtime are needed to cover the unexpected pay in lieu of vacation time request. That was the largest amount. And then there's $2,500 related to the Water Commission uh, hired a summer intern. And there's another $1,500 adjustment uh, between two lines, political personnel and health insurance. Thank you. And for the benefit of the audience and the record and the uh, uh, you know, beginning, end of budget year, obviously, we're in the beginning of a new budget year, so this occurs all the time, just like the other uh, votes we just took on uh, putting some funding in different accounts. So that's why we went through all this uh, budget housekeeping tonight, because we're in that new budget year, and we have to just make some moves with some of our accounts. So appreciate that. Um, so any other questions? If not, look at the attached list. We'll take a motion on this. Okay, move to transfer $39,000 as detailed on the accompanying spreadsheet to cover higher than budgeted expenditures and identified accounts. Second. Thank you very much. Any other comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Okay, so we are. What do I do with my thing? Who are we next? Appointments. 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 Cemetery Committee. So we have. Uh, uh, a candidate for that. We'll go ahead and take a nomination. Sure. I'll nominate uh, Stephen Pastuzak for the uh, vacancy in the cemetery committee. Okay, thank you. Um, any other any other nominations? I believe there are any. Hearing none, we'll go ahead and close the nominations and uh, take a vote. 
All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Okay. Welcome to the cemetery committee. We appreciate him wanting to, to donate his time, and uh, the cemetery committee is moving forward and uh, taking care of some badly needed to work in some of the town cemeteries, so that's great to see we have another candidate there. Um, and what, what, so we have our uh, town manager's report. Roche, you've been yes. here two days. What do you have? Come on, what do you have for us? Two days, uh, it's been very exciting, uh, a <laughs> lot of observations. <laughs> So what, what, I, what I would like to uh, propose, at least for the next meeting, is um, that when I drove around the town and I spoke to a lot of people, and I today um, visited a lot of different buildings and projects that are going, a lot of excitement here, yes. a lot of good things happening, and there's a lot of potential for the town. So what I like to do in my town manager's report, and obviously I, I need your buy-in and uh, opinions on this, to try and put together before the meeting a short report with, you know, bullet points or paragraphs on, you know, big topic items and the things that matter to the town, the, the large items, impact items, um, to bring you up to speed on them. You know, sort of give a, you know, background, uh, update, and then next steps. And because I, I think we sometimes get lost in a lot of the, uh, you know, going down rabbit holes and things that are probably not that important sometimes and and there are a lot of things happening in the in the um, in the town and uh, and I would like to report those things to the town so I would like you to think about what's important to you uh, I mean obviously the big capital projects come to my mind uh, and things that have to do with schools and um, where big dollars are spent but they also needn't be big dollars there could be some things that are benefiting a lot of people a lot of service oriented things and I'll find a way to get that information to you so that I'm not sitting here and talking for half an hour. I'll get the report to you beforehand and maybe hit some of the highlights and give you an, uh, give an opportunity for you to ask questions. That's so, great. Sounds good. That's great. Yeah, yeah. To all of us, that'd be great, yeah. Uh, so the, the second one is, um, <coughs> I'll, I'll be careful when I say this, um, it, my observation that a lot of the town staff spend a lot of time um, Pushing paper, a lot of bureaucracy, and I, probably that's a bad word. You, they're just complying with the town charter and what needs to happen. Uh, I, I would like to probably propose, recommend, not not tomorrow, once I get a chance to just talk to everyone. Uh, there are better ways to introduce some efficiencies uh, to the way we do business. And um, I say that because a lot of the professionals um, they can add a lot of value if I can relieve them from some of that other stuff that they're doing. So they have a lot of expertise in what they're doing, and they seem to be uh, down. bouncing around with a lot of paperwork. And you know, um, I get this much of stack of paper to sign every day, and I, I think that's okay because I'm probably catching up. So I, I might have some recommendations on that. Probably this is not the forum to do it, but I'm going to have some observations, and I'll share that with you and see where we want to go with that. That's fantastic. Yeah. Great. We're all for it, right? Yep. Everybody's all for it. Efficiencies yeah. are good. Yeah. We know we know the uh, inefficiencies of government, so maybe we can make it more efficient. Well, As in any organization. Yes, it's anywhere, private or public. But Good. All right. May I ask you one question? Are you lean trained? Uh, not really, no. Okay. No. I was just wondering. Lean management. I, have, I understand some of those lean management concepts and okay. Six Sigma and all of those yeah, things, exactly. but I have not really gone through a formal training for okay. those things. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. So special committee reports, I don't, we have not had any. Um, probably the next one we need to look at is the uh, ordinance committee again. I. We'll have to review it. I don't remember what was left on there. What was left? We took some votes. We cleared off some of it. Uh, we'll 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 get up to speed on what's left on that. We'll try and set a meeting. We're trying to have a fields committee in first week of August. Um, just you know, so everybody knows the the work on uh, Scalise Field has begun. And I I thought Jen was going to stay longer, and I was going to try and pin her down. Maybe she could give us a brief one, but I missed that opportunity, and I apologize. Um, but. It's supposed to be on target. I mean, we've had some good weather, no rain, so um, I think the, the target is by the end of August, some of the teams may be able to start using that field, and then it's supposed to be ready for September. So, uh, And then they're going to start the 
uh, the, the updates and uh, safety precautions on the bleachers and phases also. So we'll have an update. I'll try and maybe I'll talk to Jen and maybe she can say something next week or we next do, meeting. We do have an update. I can give you an update. Jeff might remember the letter better than I did, uh, but, but uh, yeah, it, we're a little bit delayed on the field, which is disturbing, but, but there are some provisions for that. Uh, but as Jen explained to me the other day when I signed the letter, um, you know, calling that to the company's attention, obviously, right, that, that they, I think they said, and whatever, Jeff, I'll let you explain it better than me, but that these initial steps won't put us behind. But the way, the way that we set the contract, track, contract up is we have milestones and we have liquidated damages like $500 a day for missing milestones. So they missed a couple of the initial milestones. They missed the commencement mobilization start date and the procurement start date. So there's, we've notified them that we've assessed liquidated damages against them for missing the milestones. Missing the milestones doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to miss the substantial completion date, but we have to be aggressive in order to make sure that Castle Booz, who's the designer and providing contract administration services for the town, is on top of whether or not the substantial completion date is in jeopardy. Because if the substantial completion date is in jeopardy, then quite frankly we need to declare a default and go to the performance bond surety and really crank up the heat in a hurry. What's the, date, what's the date they're supposed to be done by? Do we know? Uh, what? September. I'm in September. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was just going back to the yeah. last email, so I haven't talked to her. Yeah. Pretty early September, the holidays, right? Like yeah. Everything was, was, was going fine at that point. They started on time. Mm -hmm. But you've got some new information. Yeah, they're about 26 days behind. Mm -hmm. Based yes. on the milestones. It's, but they claim, right? At least Jen told me. They yeah. claim that those initial milestones, they could make that up. Right, right? That there's, there's float and they can make it up. It's the milestones don't really matter, matter to them. <laughs> yeah, they to matter them. to us because yeah. if you don't have milestones, then you're sitting there in late August looking at a field that's nowhere near being done right. and there's no contractual relief. So right now we're holding $13,000 and we've notified them that it's continuing at $500 a day. Um, they've, they've since met those milestones, okay. but we're still holding money. Right. They're still behind, right? Well, they met the they milestones. Met, they met the milestones. So we're okay right so now. The, the accrual of the liquidated damages for yeah. those milestones has stopped. Okay. Because they met them. Right. Yeah. So it runs from the <coughs> date that they were supposed to meet it until the date they did meet it. Okay. Uh, Charlie? I don't know the particulars of this type of construction, but the weather this year has slowed every single project in the state. You know, my work is way behind because there's so much rain, so many rain days that may have affected the progress. Yeah, I mean, there's provisions in the contract where they can request an extension of time if they think they're being delayed by weather. They haven't done that. Hmm. Again, the contractors, they're concerned with the substantial completion date more than they are the milestones. Yeah. But the contract, I like I said, up. I just, I'm not trying to defend them. I'm just saying, you know, Every project I've been involved in, we put back right away. Okay. Well, yeah, so. I mean, we, we did a uh, basically replaced a synthetic turf field in another town that I represent in May. So they went in, they took up it was crumb rubber infill, they reclaimed the infill, stripped the synthetic turf made some drainage modifications, added some stone, put a new carpet down, new infill, the whole thing was done in May, one month. Which is what we're doing. So, right. same scope, pretty much. So it is doable. And how long is ours taking now? The schedule allows it to take about two and a half months. Hmm, that's, that's interesting. Okay, well, let's, let's hope, uh, we're okay. Well, we're on top of it, so I appreciate you staying on top of it. I know Jen's on top of it, parking Rex on top of it, so we will, uh, I guess. She's got every milestone on her calendar. So yeah, so that's good. No, I know we're on top of it. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, well, we'll, we'll, we'll do the best we can. Um, okay, so Council Communications. Anything to add? <coughs> yes, sir. Can um, the town collect car taxes? Biannually instead of annually? 
Is there anything preventing that from happening? Because I know we collect real estate taxes biannually. We voted on that. I think it was last year. Yeah. Um, is there anything preventing that? Instead there's of no, there's no if you're there's no state law that prevents you from doing it biannually. The question is whether or not it's in the charter. I think you know, it's just, I think it's instead just of paying a thousand dollars all at once in July between two or three cars for a family, Pro you should split problem it up. Problem that comes in in my former life. Uh, there's an update to the motor vehicle uh, in February, I believe. Oh, and that's what's used to assess. Yeah. If the you're NADA not on numbers, the right? Pardon? The NADA numbers. Well, no. If you're not on the assessment oh, in, in October or by September, October they pick you up, or February they pick you up. Right. So. We'd have to look at that and see if it's doable. Yeah, I, I was just update. thinking about like, you know, kind of like apportioning out how much you pay instead of like, like all at once. Like July is a really tough month for yep. the people. So instead of paying a thousand dollars all at once, you kind of split it up. But it was just, you know, a topic for discussion. If you need to yeah, I, I, I think it's doable. I think we'd have to get with the uh, Taxpayers Association and the Motor Vehicle. Yeah. Or at least the Taxpayers Association there. They, um, but I agree. I yeah. mean, you buy a new car and we all decided to do it as uh, for real estate, and then we didn't do it for car taxes. Right. I didn't know if it was. Uh, but there, you know, there might now that you say that there might have been a reason why we didn't do it. I just and that could be it. Yeah. I, I don't remember why. And, uh, you know, unless we just didn't just something deal with discussion. It. Yeah, it's worth looking into. It would be nice yep. to split that in half too, right? Yeah. yeah. Instead of getting hit all on uh, the month of July. So we'll look. I think you spend a long time with motor vehicle now. Do that. <laughs> Be careful. Yeah. All right. Any other? Uh, I do. Have yes. Yes. So um, I have a couple things. One is uh, I've been in town oh, like 33 years or so now, and um, the one thing that I see is we have so many volunteers, whether they're on boards and commissions or in there and um, different organizations throughout town, whether they're a nonprofit, a 501c3 or, or not. And I really think that part of Berlin's strength is the fact that we do have people that work on nonprofits um, for the betterment of our town. So I, I just want to recognize what they give because they're volunteers and they give of themselves. And the other thing I want to say on a personal note that um, Kate Wall has been wonderful um, whenever I've gone to you for assistance and I really appreciate all that you do so thank you thank you did all that for Kate always call Kate when we need that the answer Kate scrambles and finds it if she doesn't know off the top of her head right and she, she does not off the top of her head <laughs> so Roche that's, there's your go-to I'm uh, sure you figured that out already but uh, <laughs> go-to person okay what else we got any else on that no Okay, we're good. So we'll go on to our acceptance of minutes. Uh, we have the minutes. So just, one, uh, just one, and we uh, there were some corrections to the minutes which were handed out. So we incorporate those in. And uh, we're going to take a motion on that. Okay, motion to accept the town council meeting minutes from Tuesday, June 18th, 2019, as amended. Second. Thank you very much. Any other comments? None. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, all any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Thank you. Okay, now we need to uh, come to the end of our agenda. We need to move into an executive session, so we'll have to unfortunately ask members of the public to leave other than who we invite in. So uh, we'll take a motion. Okay, executive motion to move into executive session pending litigation. Connecticut General State Statutes, Section 1 206B, Strategy and Negotiations with Respect to Pending Claims or Pending Litigation. Now we have Prospective litigation concerning Zero Atkins Street and the Helen Regan Civil Case. Thank you. A second on that? Second. Second.